Throughout these first few chapters of the book of Proverbs, Solomon has pressed and urged for his son to seek after and to go after wisdom, to get the understanding, to find the knowledge. And for the Bible-believing Christian, we know that this is also a message to us from our Heavenly Father to pursue after and to obtain godly wisdom. I remember as a child, a question that I would frequently ask whenever I was told to do something was, why? Why should I do this? What is the purpose? Often, it was not that I didn't want to do it, but rather that I desired understanding of the purpose or the reason behind what I was doing. There is no doubt in my mind that understanding the why of a task will help motivate us who are performing the task. Here in Proverbs chapter 3, verses 13 through 20, we will see the why behind obtaining wisdom. Verse 13 reads, Happy is the man that findeth wisdom, and the man that getteth understanding. This word happy throughout the Bible does not only refer to being happy, but also derives with it the notion of being blessed. Solomon is telling his son here that by finding wisdom, he would be blessed. Not simply happy in his attitude, but blessed in his life. The individual who finds wisdom is blessed, and he will in turn be happy. In the pursuit of godly wisdom, a development takes place. And that development of gaining knowledge and understanding and wisdom will bring about blessing and happiness into the individual's life. In life today, the world is seeking happiness, but what they do not know is that true happiness will only come from the blessing that godly wisdom brings. And godly wisdom will only come by pursuing after the things of God found within his word. Solomon tells his son, happy is the man that findeth wisdom and the man that getteth understanding. Those words, findeth and getteth, give us the connotation that there is effort being put forth. They are working hard and striving to obtain the wisdom and understanding. And this comes from continually pursuing after God. The question stands, why obtain wisdom? Here in the next several verses, wisdom is given the feminine pronoun she. This does not relate to the gender of wisdom, but rather this is simply a linguistic device used in writing. This personification of wisdom does not refer here to the gender, but is a poetic tool used to refer to wisdom, as oftentimes we will hear people name a boat or a ship or a machine or, or the earth or the land as a she. In the same way, Solomon personifies wisdom with the feminine pronoun she. Look with me at verses 14 and 15. For the merchandise of it, wisdom, is better than the merchandise of silver, and the gain thereof than fine gold. She is more precious than rubies, and all the things that thou canst desire are not to be compared unto her. Solomon notes the great truth in these verses that wisdom is far more valuable than any amount of money that one could ever receive. What you gain from having wisdom is far better than what you can gain from silver or gold. Wisdom in and of itself is far more precious than rubies. And then Solomon goes just a step further and he makes the statement, and all the things thou canst desire. Think about that. Anything that you could ever desire, it won't even compare to the wisdom that God can give you. If being blessed and happy is not enough, and if realizing the value that wisdom holds isn't enough, the question is still posed, why obtain wisdom? Look at verses 16 through 18. It says in verse 16, length of days is in her right hand, and in her left hand riches and honor. Her ways are ways of pleasantness, and all her paths are peace. She is a tree of life to them that lay hold upon her, and happy is everyone that retaineth her. These verses are a restatement of what Solomon told us in Proverbs 3, verse 2. He said, For length of days and long life and peace shall they add to thee. Wisdom personified here in verse 16 holds longevity of life in her right hand. And there is no doubt that by having godly wisdom that our days will be lengthened. 
because wisdom is the right use of knowledge and understanding, and it is the discernment which allows us to navigate through life by the help of God. But then in wisdom's left hand, she holds riches and honor. Wisdom is far more valuable than riches, but wisdom is able to give us riches as well. Wisdom is able to increase your honor, or rather increase your standing with your fellow man. Here we are being told that wisdom will not simply increase the quantity of your life or your length of days, but it will add to the quality of your life with riches and honor. In verse 17, we are told that the way of wisdom is pleasantness and peace. We know that Proverbs 1, 7 tells us that fools despise wisdom and instruction. The fool will never obtain the pleasantness and the peace of life. This true peace will only come from godly wisdom. Let's look again at exactly what verse 18 says. It says, She, wisdom, is a tree of life to them that lay hold upon her, and happy is everyone that retaineth her. A continual source of life and blessing to those who have obtained her, to those who have sought long and hard after her, to those who, despite the troubles and difficulties of life, have pursued diligently after her. This verse tells us that it is only for those that lay hold on her and those that retain or keep her. The sad fact about wisdom is that even after you've obtained it or laid hold upon it, you can lose it just like that. We know that Solomon asked for wisdom and God gave it to him. But even though he had received the wisdom, in his latter life he forsook it by pursuing after strange women and the cares of this world. What is clearly being implied is that wisdom, once obtained, can fly away like a bird. Our question has been, why obtain wisdom? So that we can be blessed and happy, because of the value that wisdom holds, so that we can have quantity and quality of life. These are great things. But now Solomon closes this section on the blessings of wisdom with stating in verses 19 and 20, he says, the Lord by wisdom hath founded the earth, by understanding hath he established the heavens. By his knowledge the depths are broken up, and the clouds drop down the dew. Solomon is demonstrating that God used wisdom and understanding in creating the heavens and the earth. We are given a glimpse into how awesome our God is, and that this wisdom and understanding that we can tap into and have in our own lives is wisdom that only comes from God. Although we will never approach God's omniscient wisdom and understanding, the point is that this wisdom and understanding which lead to wonderful blessings in our lives comes only from God. It is to God that we must go for this wisdom. So why obtain wisdom? God clearly lays out several blessings and benefits of godly wisdom. Now, my question is simple. Are you pursuing after wisdom? Have you laid hold upon wisdom? May we all seek the wisdom that comes from God.